Hello, everyone. Brian Garcia here with Acuity Solutions. Want to take some time to shed a little light on the Team Center solution, no pun intended. We've uh, been using NX for many years along with other CAD solutions, but uh, we all know that sometimes it's very important to understand what's going on with our data and where it's being saved and shared and the, the security of it as well. So I wanted to kind of address a few of those topics today and, and kind of uh, explore some other team center options with you. So as you can see here, we've got a, a small assembly here of this spring lamp assembly. And, uh, and this is actually integrated to team center right now. You can see there's a column here with the revision level. And so that's being tracked inside a team center along with each individual part number for each component. So, uh, so this is very handy. One of the strong points of uh, Team Center is that when you pull a, a part number in the system, that's a, a unique part number and it can never be duplicated. So we all have those situations out there, um, you know, stories from the trenches where, you know, you know, you've been working on something and, and you, you know, maybe you need to recycle a design, but you can't find the exact part. And sometimes you have to end up recreating it again. Well, then you, you find it somewhere else or someone else stored it somewhere else, other, another folder on a server. And uh, you have end up having duplicate part numbers, which can cause a lot of problems. And, uh, you know, a lot of revenue can be lost because things are manufactured to the wrong revision and that kind of thing. So bottom line is, you know, Team Center is able to track all the different revisions and uh, pull those just unique part numbers. So it's kind of one very important, maybe simple thing, but very important thing, thing down the line here. So. As you can see, we can see this assembly in NX that I've been developing. Well, if we switch over to Team Center, you can see the Team Center rich client here. And this is my own home environment with my own login, and I can organize my home environment however I choose. Um, but in real time, as people in my team are creating data, I can search on those part numbers, or if I have them linked into my project folder, I can see the revisions taking place. So for this particular part here, this base cover, you can see there's multiple revisions and some re release statuses. Uh, I can open this up and I can see the actual NX part. Here on the item revision level, you can see over on the right here, there's different tabs that are available to me. So this is just a summary tab, give me a thumbnail image and maybe some other attributes that, that I use quite often. The other tab that's very useful is this details tab. I always try to say that this is my cheat sheet here. It's a good resource if you're trying to understand the team center terminology. Right here, you can see underneath type, you know, we've got item revision master forms, and then here's the UG master, which is the NX part. So this is a, some good feedback here, and also some other important information tells who the owner is and the group. Get some date stamps here when stuff was uh, saved last. So all kinds of different attributes that are kind of important to the whole you know, project management design solution here. So, uh, so that same information, like in just kind of a quick little example, you know, maybe somebody gives you a part number and you need to do a little research on that. So I can come into here and there's all kinds of different um, queries available to me. So here's a couple of the most used ones and we'll use, you know, all these are item types that we're creating here. So by default, it's always gonna find items that are created by you. Uh, good, just a good thing is to always clear that because you may be searching for something that's not created by you, most likely. And so I'm just going to do a, a quick search here on this part that we're working with. So the, the results really quickly will be displayed here. And uh, again, same thing that I'm, I've been showing you is the spring base cover here. But I can open that up and I can look at all the different revisions, look at the latest. And then I can also visualize this here in, in Team Center as well. So one of the big benefits of, of Team Center is a lot of times, you know, in your team, you're not actually working with all engineers that are, have access to NX or a CAD tool. So you may, you know, need to work with your purchasing agent, you know, as far as they need to look at some of this stuff or your project manager maybe needs to do a presentation. Well, they can come right in here to Team Center, see what the latest design is and, and, visualize this in real time and not have to open up a CAD tool. So this is a real important thing here. Um, so this is just a single part being able to view it. 
if I come over into my home environment where this assembly was in NX that I was just showing, I can drill down in my project folder here and I can see I've got revision C here. And so I already have that open in NX, but if I want to open this and visualize it inside a team center, I can send this to the structure manager. You can see your little thumbnail image here, which comes from NX. But I also have the structure manager available to me, which displays the bill of material, just like you see it in NX. And again, this is, you know, everybody that has a log in the team centers has access to this. And then they can, you know, project management here as well. So I can, I can turn on the, the graphics viewer. And then this is where I can visualize the latest and greatest assembly or bill of material here. So as you can see, there's a lot of options available here. Now, one of the great things here, again, kind of something simple, but very kind of powerful tool here. You know, this is just a simple assembly, but you can imagine trying to navigate through a very large assembly. I'm going to, by just clicking on a particular part number that I'm familiar with, I can see it highlight on the screen. So that's a, that's a pretty good, good deal there. Um, again, a small assembly, but you can imagine, uh, I know a lot of customers out there, you know, automotive and aerospace where you're dealing with huge assemblies, hundreds, if not thousands of parts. So this is, you know, sometimes you're familiar with visually, you can click on something and it'll activate uh, on the other split screen here where the bill of material is. So that's a kind of a good feedback there. So, you know, we're all visual people. A lot of times you just want to click on the part that you know that you're working with. But if you have the part number, you can also access it that way as well. So I can click on the lampshade here and we've got all that information available to us as well. So the next topic I'd like to cover is uh, individual CAD parts and how those work inside of Team Center and the integration. So as you can see here, we've got revision D of this spring base cover. So I can open this up and I can see again all the individual uh, components or data sets, I should say, that are related to this particular item revision. And uh, the, another nice thing that you can do here is in the summary tab, there's a where used feature here. So I can click on the where used and it's going to tell me where that part exists as far as other assemblies. So, if, you know, as we all know, if we're changing a lower level component part, it's going to affect other assemblies and other designs. And so we want to be careful if we're going to make a modification, you know, what are we going to be changing? Is it going to affect any of the down, you know, downstream design changes or functionality, I should say. But um, yeah, so once we found our particular part, we can go ahead and open that in NX. And here that is. So, uh, so again, that's kind of what we're used to seeing in, in working in native, you know, and then we've, We've got the uh, part navigator that shows us all the different features. So if we need to make some modifications there. So um, another uh, another option at this point is that we could, maybe we need to increment the revision. Maybe there was some kind of change that uh, was discussed in a meeting. And so we need to roll the revision. So how you do that in here is a save as, and then this dialog box is displayed to you. So we can actually just uh, roll the revision here. Another option is that you may want to go in a whole different design direction and click new item to create a whole new cover itself. So uh, at this, but in this situation, we're just going to go new revision. I'm double clicking. We're going to roll to revision E. We're going to click OK on that. And it's going to go ahead and create that inside the team center real time. It's uh, cached locally, but it's also being saved and backed up on your server. So you can see. Here I've got revision E that's available to me and that's open and checked out to me as well. The little blue arrow shows that that is checked out. So once we've opened that up, maybe we need to make some kind of change. You know, maybe there is a, this edge blend. It was decided that for the mold or something, we need to open that up to 10 millimeters. We can go ahead and make that change. Go ahead and save that. And then we're gonna go ahead and exit out. So in this scenario, I'm just doing a, a quick release. Let's do a refresh here.
Okay. So I'm to make sure this gets checked in because, yeah, the, the most important thing is when we're releasing something that it has to be checked in. And it's kind of a safeguard. You don't want to be releasing something if it's already being checked out and worked on by some other user. So with that being checked in, I can go into my workflow and release this particular component. So if I go file new workflow process, out of the box in Team Center Rapid Start, there's all kinds of different templates that are available to me, to kind of industry standard kinds of things. But in this scenario, just showing you how we apply a, a quick status. Again, this could be something, a situation where it's coming from another legacy system or a third party maybe has done some work and, it, and, it, and it's already been released through a different means. And so we're coming in here and we're actually just gonna apply a status to lock this down so no other changes can take place. So once I click okay here, we'll see the status show up and there's down below here, right access is not permitted to this object. So that's what we wanna see there. So now that'll be, that's the next uh, latest and greatest working um, status uh, revision of this base cover. So that'll be used downstream in the assemblies that we talked about. So if we go to the where used, we can see that it's going to be, that is going to, that revision is going to be updated in these four assemblies here. So if we go back to, our assembly, our lamp assembly. We can see in real time that this has been updated here. So the way NX works out of the box, is if you have the assembly open, I've rolled the revision and in the same session, it's actually done an automatic replace. So that could be a good thing. If you don't want that, you gotta make sure you close out of your assembly first and then you can decide if that, you know, you can make that change on the fly or uh, manually make that change and do a replace on that component. So I'm gonna exit out of this. Actually, let me go ahead and hit cancel. I'm gonna save this assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that component. Let's see if we have anything else open here. Hope we have this other cover, that's all right. So what I'm gonna do here is we're, we're going to do a compare on this assembly after I've rolled the revision. So now, if I go to my assembly, let's go ahead and open up uh, revision A of this first assembly here. So again, we're going to send this to the structure manager. We can open up the graphics window. And right away we can see again, small, simple assembly here, but I can see I'm, rev I'm using revision A. So this is just a snapshot in time of this assembly using the re revision A of the base cover. So now we're gonna do a little split screen. We're gonna send the current bill of material or bomb structure over. So if I go send to structure manager, now I can see I'm using revision E. So uh, let's turn on some other functionality here. So we're gonna go ahead and do this and turn on the visualization. So, you know, this is a scenario where the, the changes are very subtle, right? I just changed that blend or that fillet on the edge of that base. So this is a good scenario, like where you, you can't visually see the changes taking place, but you, you wanna, if you're a project manager or all the, you know, all everybody on your team, you wanna understand what's taking place, what revisions are being used. And um, so here visually, you can't see the change, but we know that that blend has, has been altered and modified and saved. And that's why we created revision E. So again, a simple assembly here, but to take this to the next level, there's a tool inside of Team Center here in the Structure Manager where we can compare both of these assemblies. So I can compare it at the lowest level. There's other options here, but we'll do the lowest level and we're gonna generate a report. So by generating a report, 
what it's going to do, you can see that there's an item highlighted in my bill of material here. So let's move these windows around a little bit so we can see everything. So this kind of tells the whole story here, right? We can see that highlighted here, just like we've been talking about in the revision A of this top level assembly, we're using revision A of the spring base cover. Whereas in revision C of the spring lamp assembly, we've got revision E that's being used. So there must have been some kind of modifications that took place. And then our report tells us so down here. Again, simple assembly, but you can imagine hundreds, if not thousands of parts, and you're trying to figure out what's changed between these two bills of materials. This is a very powerful tool here. And uh, and so we can see at part number 131, spring base cover, revision went from A to E, still quantity one. And then there's some other additional columns here that can be either removed or added. But yeah, that kind of tells the story there. And then to take it up to the next level, there's actually a, another tool here that's been added in in recent years, this graphical bomb compare. So this is pretty handy. Um, so this is just giving us a visual, of, you know, just kind of working through this here, I'm gonna say show common components. So we're gonna turn on the visualization and it's gonna show the common components. But if you look here, we're comparing that assembly 122 revision A to, uh, from the left and to the right is 122 C. So these little slider bars here kind of make it a little easier to figure out what's going on in the assembly as well. If I slide it to the left here, it removes what was added. If I move the canceled, so now, now I'm back on the revision A side, right? Now it's, it's showing the component that was in that assembly at that snapshot in time. So if I slide this back and, I, and then I slide the add to the right side, now I can see what was added in. So again, we changed just a, a blend radius in there. And so that's kind of a, an interesting situation to evaluate, I guess, because I mean, a lot of times that's a lot of scenarios, you know, there's like little small changes that are happening. They're not huge visual changes. Now, another thing here that we haven't showed, but it's very handy, as you can see, there's this moves uh, slider bar. So, you know, a lot of times in assemblies, we're moving components to different positions. So that would be very handy as well as you're, as the design is evolving and you're trying to, you know, keep track of what's happening from revision to revision. So. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that and pause for a second. And then, uh, so the next topic, I wanted to show like have a, maybe a little more complicated way of releasing components. So let's go ahead and exit out of structure manager here. So there's this idea of, of sign offs, right? We wanna create a situation right the, I just showed you a simple quick release with this revision E here. So there's a, there's a scenario that you might wanna work through and which a lot of people are, are using here in Rapid Start is this out of the box workflow process, which is a engineering item type here. Actually, let me back up a second here. What we're gonna do first, as you can see, there's all these different items that are created here, which are just single components. We're actually gonna create an item that's an engineering order item. So I'm gonna go next, and this is being tracked by a part or an ID as well. And so maybe I'm my project or this ECO is a uh, a new cover. That we've been working with here, a new lamp base cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and finish that. And so we'll see that item show up on our in our home environment here. And as we work through it here, there's some additional forms that we can actually populate with other attributes. Just a quick little preview of this. You can see all the different attributes on here that we can add some uh, proposed solutions in here in different other uh, change request numbers, maybe coming from another system, cost estimate. So all these things, this is just out of the box that comes with Team Center Rapid Start. You can add to this list if you choose to do so. Um, so even if I, if I check this out form here, so we've got some list of values. We can make this a high priority, low priority, whatever we want to do here. And now we're going to say improvement department coming from engineering. 
technical review priority. We have select that uh, proposed solution. We're going to say new cover. for venting heat. I'm going to check in. So we've captured all that information there. So the most important thing that we're looking at here is these different folders. So there's revised parts, obsoleted parts. So maybe we're going to, and we're going to work through this. And then there's reference data. So that could be you know, maybe some emails or some pictures, documents that have come out from the field that kind of tell the whole story of what the, the release is going to happen here. And then we've got new parts as well. So I already have this new part that I've already created on, on the side here, the spring base cover. It's a vented cover. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and link that into the system here so we can see there's some holes in there that we've created. We're going to copy that and paste that link into this new parts here. Actually, well, you know, in this situation, it, I am going to put it into the revised. That makes a little more sense here in, in this scenario. And then let me double check to make sure I thought I had that checked in. Oh, no, it is checked out. So here's, here's the assembly. I'm sorry, the drawing, but it's, it's kind of built like an assembly. We've got a structure. Here's the top level, uh, which is the drawing itself, and it's got the part underneath it. So just a, a few dimensions here to kind of tell the story. So we're, we're able to, what we can do is we can actually export drawings to Team Center. So I can actually visualize this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And on the side, if you wanted to, you could actually, if you need the PDFs, you can actually export PDFs as well. So if I say PDF, click OK here. And now we can see those items show up underneath the item revision here. So there's the PDF file if we need that to communicate with other colleagues or email that to somebody. But then we also have the drawing itself. Now we can visualize right here inside a team center. So there's that, and that can be printed out. We can, you can even then you can get into like markups and, and mark out stuff here for the next revision if that needs to happen. So uh, with that all being said, I think we're done with this. We're gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. Parts and assembly. Double check to make sure nothing's open. Now we're going to come back in here. I'm going to go ahead and, and check in this as well. So the other thing I'm going to do to tell the whole story. So I've uh, I've got this new part that I'm going to be releasing revision C here. So then I'm going to go and grab. Revision B is going to be obsolete. Let's just grab that. And, you know, just one thing I'm going to do is click on the summary tab every time I click on, if I have the viewer tab, kind of a pet peeve of mine, it's always going to refresh that. So it takes a little more time. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that link. And we're going to paste that into the obsoleted folder. All right. So I think we've got everything that we want to do here. So we're obsoleting that part, and we're going to be releasing this part. So here's where the where it gets a, a little more complicated, and you can have a sign-off between other people on your team, which is, is really handy. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the actual engineering order item. And now we're going to go ahead to do the workflow process. And there's an engineering order template in here, which is Again, out of the box, but you can see it's a little more complicated. So just to kind of review this, we're creating the, the engineering change order. We're going to look for manager approval, you know, maybe from some verbal meeting we had, but we're going to get an electronic sign off. 
Then we're going to have the engineer do the work, you know, update the drawing, what have you. And then there's going to be a final checkoff and review here. So, so those are all the different steps and those will be tracked electronically right side inside of Team Center here. So right off the bat, I can choose to, to do this on the fly or I can, you know, basically assign these tasks to one individual or multiple individuals on the right at the very beginning here. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to add myself to all the different sign offs here. So that's the first change request. And then I'm going to go ahead and add me myself as a manager approval. And then we're going to go for the engineering CAD work and then the final check. So what we'll see is as we're working through this and signing off, this is going to go into different people's uh, inboxes or, or work list to do this work. And so and they'll be able to sign off and leave comments electronically. So now I've, I've started the process. You can see there's a work uh, in process here. A little icon there that tells me that that's uh, being worked on. And so there's another tab here they want to draw your attention to. There's a work list, and this is going to track all the different tasks that you have to perform. So just kind of on your in your daily routine as you you know start your work for the day, check an email. Well, one of the things that you would do here is you check to see if there's any tasks to perform. And then in the viewer tab, you could you know review that data. You can go and look at the attachments, just like we've been looking at the different drawings and that kind of thing. We can see what the revised part is going to be here with all the supporting data. And we can also look at the obsoleted part and see all that information as well. So uh, at this moment in time, you know, we've basically said, yes, this, we're gonna do this uh, engineering change order. I can come in here and look at the template process, look at and see what stage we're at. So it's waiting for some kind of sign off at this point in time. So that's me, I got something to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and prove this. Looks good my comment and we're going to go ahead and click OK on that. So now right away it's going to go to the next step which is uh, the manager approval right. So if we're going to go look at that we're going to go to the top level here. Now we're looking for manager approval. So now I've initiated the engineering change order. Now the manager will approve this just to kind of sign off. There we go. And then the next thing in, in the line here is uh, the CAD work. So we know just a matter just because of, uh, of time here, I'm just going to kind of speed this thing along a little bit. So again, we're looking at the process here. There's an engineering change order. I could go back in and open that up and make a change. But in all actuality here, let's look at the targets. I believe there's one item still checked out. So yeah, we have to make sure everything is, is checked in. Right before we, there we go. Because again, it's, there's again, there's a safeguard here. If something's checked out to somebody, it's not going to release it. And it'll fail. So everything looks like it's checked in. These are our new files that we've created. We're going to go to our task to perform. I can come in here. I can say approve. Work is completed. And then the final step is to, to check off, you know, maybe in your situation, the drawings are actually printed out, you get a hard copy, you know, there's pen to paper, people, managers are signing off in the title block. Once all that work is done and standards have been checked off on, then uh, I could say, you know, maybe drawing is signed off. And we can release for manufacturing. And click OK. So at that point in time, there's no more tasks to perform. So that leaves my work list. But if I go back to my home environment here, what do I find? I find uh, in my folder here, I've got a part that was released. All the corresponding supporting documents are released and locked down. It's revised. And I also have 
an obsoleted part here. So those will not, no longer be uh, manufactured, but you know, who knows, maybe we need, as far as like repair parts down the road, some other designs that were made years ago, you know, we need to still have those available. So now they're still here in the system being tracked. So that's a good thing. So, uh, so we've released all these components. So a little more complicated way, but actually a more concise way and a better way of, of tracking who's doing the work. And when that's all said and done, I can come in here and to the end of time, there's a, I can, there's this other tab here called process history. So this actually tells the whole story. You can see all the comments and approvals that I was writing and tracking are all listed here in the comment section, right? And it, and it shows the person that performed the task. There's a, there's a, all the time is logged in here. So as you can tell, it's pretty powerful. You know, if you're, you know, if you're tracking from weeks to years and, and trying to understand when things were released and, and trying to get a handle on different project work, this is a good way to look at, um, that work and, and see how, how the whole process happened. So uh, hopefully, you know, again, sometimes this team center stuff can be a little convoluted and a little boring at times, but uh, I assure you, I'm sure we all have our experiences out there where we've lost data or uh, we're trying to find data or the data that we found ends up being duplicated later on. So the big thing with team center is just to make sure you're making sense of the madness here, you know, releasing components and and having full visibility of all the things that are going on within a team center and with your project work. So um, with that, um, I could also do a, a replacing, but I think uh, you guys get a handle on what's going on here. Uh, there's an assembly I could open up here and we can take a look at that. Let's see. Let's open up this assembly. So another scenario here. So I'm already, you know, maybe I want to roll this assembly. So again, just like we did a part, I'm going to do save as. Roll the revision of that assembly. It's going to save all of its corresponding data. And so maybe the nature, again, just kind of speeding things along here. Maybe this engineering change order has me replacing the existing cover with that vented cover. And so I could still, I could put this assembly in that engineering change order template that we just saw, but just for time purposes here, I'm gonna do a right mouse click and replace component. And maybe I'm gonna browse. And now I found this, here's that vented cover. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and I can see Let's look at this. I can see it's got a status on it. So that's maybe it's all been released. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. So I've replaced this with a totally different cover, right? This, is a, this isn't rolling the revision of a part. This is actually replacing with a different part altogether. And now I've actually got a visual physical feature that's actually changed that I can see a little better. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save all that corresponding information. And if I go in the team center here, we can do a compare as well. So I can go back to this. I can see I've already created another revision here. So that same scenario that we reviewed earlier, I can send this to the structure manager. All right. So now uh, let me do a little split, split screen here as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead Go back to my home environment. We're going to send that to the structure manager. And now I can see visually, again, I can, on the bill material here, I can see there's a difference. But let's uh, bring up the graphics viewer again, like we did earlier. So again, this is really the power of Team Center here is where we can visualize all this and, and, and not just CAD users, everybody on our team, anybody that's participating in this project can now view all these components because now we're saving these lightweight JT files that everybody in the whole set enterprise, your work environment can view. So now this is a scenario we can actually see a physical change. 
So again, we can go through all those same steps like we did before. I can compare, create a report, right? Cancel. And now, again, we get some different color coding here. This is showing us in red that it's actually being replaced. It's not the orange that we saw before was showing a revision rolling. Well, here, this is a, a little more dramatic change, right? It, it's telling me, and it, but it does show the revision levels here. So if we read the report down below in the first revision A of this top level assembly, we had re revision A of the spring base cover. Now we have a zero quantity in revision D of 122. And then the next line is the new component, that vented cover that we designed. Zero, it's got a quantity of one and, and it's got a revision of C. So again, uh, you know, not to um, repeat myself, but I guess I will. Uh, you know, this is a very small assembly, very simple assembly, but as you can imagine, all you guys are working with very large assemblies out there. And so you can imagine cutting through all all the minutia and all the all the comp complexity here. It's really going to evaluate both of these bill materials visually, and then through your your uh, you know the actual bomb itself, you'll be able to see all these changes taking place. And then uh, again, the graphic bomb compare is very powerful here as well, where we can it's going to process this. So I'm looking at the difference. It's again. Just a quick review, we're going from revision A to revision D here now, and it's showing all the parts that are added. So we just have this single part that was added. And again, that tells the story. We can show common parts. It's doing an overlap here. So there's different slider bars here that we can evaluate to make see what the changes were. And so so again, thanks for your time, everybody. Appreciate you taking time out of your day. Uh, just wanted to share a little, uh, some topics in Team Center that I think will be beneficial for you. And I, I know there's, there's never a good time to try to implement some of this stuff because you guys are constantly trying to get stuff to market. But lo and behold, there's, there's always, we all have those, um, scenarios or those stories from the trenches where we've lost data or we manufactured to a, a wrong revision. And, uh, I'll tell you time over again, the team center can get you get a handle on this information and and make a and allow your whole team, not just yourself, but the whole team can understand the evolution of the design and how all this stuff fits together and uh, and basically save some money. So thanks for your time again, everybody. If there's anything any questions you guys have, please let us know. Happy to have some one on one sessions with you guys and and uh, go ahead and give us a call or send us an email and we can review some of this stuff in more detail. Have a great day, everybody. Talk to you on the next blog.